With me today is a brand new and completely redesigned 2020 Ford Escape. Now, looking at the outside, it's really hard to tell this is an Escape because it looks nothing, nothing like the previous generation. It's also really hard to tell if this is a crossover SUV or a lifted hatchback. Regardless, Ford went back to the drawing board redesigning Escape. It is now a little bit larger. There's a new interior. There's more safety features, more engine options, new transmissions, and a whole lot more. Now that Ford is moving away from sedans, crossover SUVs like this is crucial to Ford's success. So is this a winner? Can it compete with its rivals? That's what I'm here to find out. So in this review, I'm gonna tell you everything there is to know about this brand new Escape. I'm also gonna rank this among its peers so you guys could decide if this is the right SUV for you. Stay tuned. A big thanks to PacuWeb Ford for making this video possible. If you're in the market for a brand new or used Ford, definitely check out PacuWeb Ford in Downers Grove. Their URL is on the screen and in the description below. The front end of the new Escape has a low sloping hood and round shape, which makes it look very car-like. The overall grille design does not resemble anything in Ford's SUV or truck lineup, which makes the Escape really hard to identify other than the Ford badge. Moving on to the side, the Escape is very round and curvy, which is unlike other manufacturers who are going for an edgy, masculine look. On this SE, there's no chrome other than the upper window trim. The wheels are 17-inch alloy wheels. The back side is definitely the best looking side in my opinion. It has a squared off look and resembles some of the back ends from Ford's luxury brand, Lincoln. The painted trim on the bottom bumper along with the dual exhaust tips add some sportiness to the look. Ford produces some of the best engines in the industry and the Escape doesn't disappoint. The base engine is a 1.5 liter turbo three cylinder that is pushing 180 horsepower. Next, there is a two liter turbo engine pushing 250 horsepower. And there are two other engines available, one for the Escape Hybrid and one for the plug-in hybrid that is coming down later this year. The trunk to the Escape is absolutely huge, one of the biggest in the class, especially if you move the front seats forward. On the left, there is a 12V outlet and a couple of net hooks towards the bottom. Now, there is a large cover underneath that is held down towards the back so you can't just lift straight up. Instead, you have to slide the cover down before lifting to reveal the spare tire. Unfortunately, there is no hidden storage anywhere in the trunk Lastly, the second row can lay down. Unfortunately, it's not flat. And there are three car seat tethers in the back. In the second row, let's talk about space, comforts, and amenities. In terms of space, there's plenty of it. I'm 5 feet 10, and there's at least 8 to 10 inches of leg room left, and 45 inches of headroom, plenty of width, two adults, three kids, no problem. And if you guys are parents, you have large car seats, no problems whatsoever. So plenty of space. In terms of comforts, Eh, lacking a little bit. This is the SE trim, one of the lower trims to escape, so you don't get a lot of comfortable features back here. But the seats are relatively comfortable. I do find them to be a little bit firmer. And the cloth that's used actually feels pretty good. It feels pretty good. They have a really cool design. So in terms of comfort, that's about it. Oh, one important thing is that the seats do adjust you can slide it forward and backwards. And that is really, really rare for a compact SUV. Almost all the manufacturers have removed this feature. So that's really nice in terms of generating more cargo space. And they do recline forward and backwards as well. Now, in terms of the amenities, well, you know, you don't get a whole lot back here either because this is the SE trim. There's no panoramic sunroof, no sunshades, but you do get a pair of vents and a 12V outlet at least. So you can buy your own adapter and convert them to USB ports if you wanted to. And that's pretty much it back here. All right, moving on to the front, starting with the seats. They look similar to the one behind in the second row. As you can see in the middle, it has this kind of cool shape. It actually feels different too. It's like the, this cloth is different than the cloth on the outside. So I'll see if this actually holds me in once I start driving. Moving to the door panel, you can see that that design kind of carries over from the seats. 
but I will say this panel is all um, hard plastic so they don't feel really good but you do have some nice contrast you could see that silver trim that flows into the door handle which is aluminum and the lock so that actually looks really fancy and then take a look how that flows into the dash you see that huge aluminum trim right it flows into here infotainment eight inch screen really really nice this actually looks really modern and sleek moves down into the climate control and then this moves into the center and then the center console right and then take a look gauge cluster and steering wheel let's talk about the infotainment system this is sync 3 and this has been upgraded you could see it's really easy to understand you got audio phone nav apps and settings and if you go to settings you could control a whole bunch even on this se trim you do have wi-fi that's built in that's really cool and you do get apple carplay android auto those are compatible so that's not a problem in this se trim it is upgraded so that it does have navigation but if you didn't if you don't want to upgrade navigation that's fine just use your phone and away you go so it's actually pretty easy to use it is somewhat responsive but as you can see it just kind of lagged up a little bit so there are times where there's still some lag but overall i think it's still decently smooth also take a look at driver assistance this is part of the copilot 360 now that is standard on this escape the only thing that's not standard is the adaptive cruise control but that was part of the navigation option that you can get it's a it's an option that pretty much adds navigation voice control and adaptive cruise control but take a look at what's standard on here besides adaptive cruise control you got you got lane keep system you got pre-collision which is basically auto braking rear view camera blind spot information cross traffic alert driver alert and traction control this is really cool how you can just turn on or off and it's all within uh within this infotainment now moving down here you have some physical buttons for volume turn on or off forward and backwards uh, to change your channel so these are physical so that's always nice now you got two large vents and down here is your climate control that's kind of integrated into the dash i actually do like how this is set up and even on this se trim you do get heated seats now usually you don't find heated seats with cloth but you can get them and i used it they heat up really fast which is nice in the winter now you can control a few things auto what you want to set the temperature to be there is only one zone it's not dual zone in here and then you can uh, adjust your fan your defroster so this is pretty explanatory now moving on to the bottom you can see just room for your phone or whatever you get one usb c port and 12v outlet all right moving on i like this design this is this is i don't know it's like kind of like a shadow shadow uh wood design i guess but it looks kind of sporting feels relatively good now you got two large cup holders this is a new drive uh drive selector so park reverse neutral drive low right so this is the new uh gear selector so you have to get used to that this is for parking and this is for modes you do have some drive modes so let me show you that in a little bit this is for engine auto start stop you could turn that off and this is for credit card or or I don't know driver's license that you could just kind of stick in there now as for the armrest if you open it up you get a USB port and just a whole bunch of room uh, no coin tray or anything so that's a little disappointing all right so I showed you this the drive mode so if you take a look at the gauge cluster if you press it uh, there's a lot of modes normal eco sport slippery and deep snow and sand so that'll just adjust based on how you want to drive and the current weather conditions now since we're looking at the gauge cluster you do see most things here are analog there is an optional huge 12.3 inch screen that replaces your whole gauge cluster that's a really cool uh, gauge cluster to have i just reviewed a ford explorer st that had that if you guys want to check out that review you'll definitely see what i'm talking about but this one has a small little screen and it's good enough right if you utilize this you can check out a lot of things uh your driver assistance navigation music phone information uh trip computer favorites and so forth right so you can scroll through 
a number of things. And the graphical interface actually looks pretty decent. Now, now moving on to the steering wheel, uh, somewhat good design, I would say. I mean, the buttons look a little bit cheap, but for this class, this is okay. You control the menu, your phone, and over here is more like the cruise control and volume, right? So those are pretty standard. Now, I will say the steering wheel is very thick. Uh, for women, that might be a problem. So I don't know why Ford decided to make the steering wheel so thick. Then moving on to the side, this is where you control your lights. This is for your window and, uh, and your mirror controls. All right, let's go for a drive and see how this Escape behaves on the roads. So first impression is, I can't really tell I'm driving an SUV. It feels like, like, like a car almost, like a sedan almost. Yes, you are sitting a little bit higher, but there's something about the way I'm seated and the way <laughs> uh, this driving position is. I, I honestly, I almost can't tell I'm in the SUV. And that could be a good thing for a lot of you guys. Um, a lot of people that's buying this, you don't want to sit really high. You want more of that, that sedan-like feel while still having the practicality and utility of of a SUV and all-wheel drive, yeah, you know, that might be what you're looking for. Now, what also relates to this driving position, and I think Ford did an excellent job at this, is the fact that visibility is outstanding, outstanding. Uh, you could clearly see over the hood. That is not an issue. The, the hood slopes down a lot. You're sitting, like, feet above. Uh, there's so much headroom, so if you wanted to put your seat higher, you can, right? Um, but there's no problem with with seeing over the hood. Um, the front windshield is huge. Side windows are equally as huge. The door panels themselves sit relatively low. The belt line is low. Uh, you could see there's actually like a two or three inch gap from the dash and the door panel. I think that's done on purpose to make the visibility even greater. So if you guys are on the shorter side, you could see out, there's no problem whatsoever. And the back window is enormous, enormous. The back window is huge. If you had the headrest up, uh, it kind of get in the way, but as long as the middle one is down, uh, you could see clearly out the middle, but it is huge. It's it's bigger than, than some of the rear windows from mid-size SUV. So visibility is awesome, absolutely awesome in this Escape. Now, let's test out the performance of this Escape. Now, this Escape, the one I'm driving the SE, comes with a 1.5 liter turbo engine. It's a three cylinder, not a four cylinder. However, it's pushing 180 horsepower and, uh, and the torque kicks in relatively fast. So let's see how this Escape does. You know what? That wasn't actually bad. That wasn't bad at all. When you compare this to its rivals, like a Honda CRV, which has equivalent amount of horsepower, or a Toyota RAV4, which actually has 20 more horsepower, this engine actually feels more lively than those two. Now, of course, I'm not talking about this is a hot rod. This is not. Um, this is not quick by any means, but compared to its rivals, it actually really stands out. And this is the lower engine. This is not the two liter turbo engine either. Now, in terms of quietness, when I was driving low speeds in the park, I felt like I was relatively quiet. But now that, I, that I've traveled up to speed, up to 60 miles per hour, I do feel like it's a little bit noisy. Not from the engine. The engine is actually nice and quiet and smooth. Um, but more from the road, I could I could hear a lot of the road noise, and I could I could hear the wind noise a little bit uh, starting to creep in, especially at 60 miles per hour. So, not the quietest compact SUV out there. So the steering is good, but it's a little bit elastic. Like the steering will turn back really really fast <laughs> um, in an elastic way. So I don't know how to describe it because I don't really feel it, uh, have this feeling in the other cars I've driven. Um, so while you're taking bends and corners, it feels actually pretty planted. I think Ford did a really good job with the suspension, but the steering wheel itself, 
like it wants to spin back to center really quick. So it feels a little elastic, and uh, and I guess you just got to get used to that. I mentioned about the steering wheel thickness. Um, it's still apparent. It doesn't add to the drive. It, it doesn't make me feel like this is more sporty because of it. So it's just really a matter up to you guys whether or not you like this or not. In my case, I'm not a fan. Now, in terms of brakes, I feel like it catches on a little bit early. It feels very similar to the Explorer I just tested, so that may be just a Ford thing, but from all the other cars I've tested normally, you know, it's it's a, it's a normal feel. I, I can't really explain it. It catches on like right in between. Uh, there's a linear feel to it. And in, in this Escape and even in the Explorer, I feel like it's a little bit firmer feel. And when you press down, it like catches right away. These seats, Unfortunately, just like the rear ones, I feel like they're a bit firm. Uh, so for me, I tried adjusting it. I just feel like it's it's on a firmer side. Now I've driven the last generation of the Escape and equal trim to a SE trim. This is light years ahead of that SE. Uh, it was slow. It was really, really dated. The cabin and everything was really dated. It was somewhat loud and you know what? My drive wasn't wasn't impressive. I, I, I did not enjoy that drive. I will say Ford made a monumental leap with this Escape. Everything has been improved. The engine's much better. The transmission, a new eight-speed transmission, definitely much better, feels much better. The cabin, the dash, everything has been improved. There's more space. So this is a monumental uh, jump from the last generation. There are five individual trim levels, starting with the S, moving on to the SE, which is what I'm reviewing today. Then you have a SE Sport Hybrid that utilize a hybrid engine. Then you have SEL, and finally Titanium, which is the top trim that you can get. Now each individual trim obviously have their own features and options, but I do wanna say that all these trims have front wheel drive and all wheel drive. If you want to add all-wheel drive, it's an additional $1,500. So it really depends on if you need all-wheel drive and if you need these individual features and options. Now the one I'm testing today is a SE trim. It has all-wheel drive added and it does have one optional package which adds uh, adaptive cruise control, navigation, and because of that with destination, it's coming in a little bit over $30,000. Next, let's look at the good and bad to this brand new Escape. Starting with the good, the Escape has a modern cabin with a great infotainment system. There's good amount of room in all rows, including the trunk. There's great power from the engines, even the 1.5 liter base engine. The Escape provides amazing visibility with a low driving position. The Escape also provides all-wheel drive option in all the trim levels and finally, the standard safety features are good as well. As for the bad, there are a few. Exterior looks is still controversial and does take getting used to. There is no hidden storage in the trunk. The seats are a tad too firm. The steering wheel is a tad too thick. And finally, the brake feel is a little twitchy. Overall, the brand new 2020 Ford Escape is a huge leap from the last generation, and I'm giving it a score of 90. And if you want to see how this Ford Escape ranks among its peers, then check out driversonlyrankings.com. Thanks for checking this out, guys. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and take a look at some of these other videos. Take care.